Good morning. Welcome to Live at 10. Today we think about Mary as it's the fourth Sunday of Advent. We think how she said yes to God. So to start our service, let's sing together as long as tech allows. The angel Gabriel from heaven came. Let us confess our sins and ask for God's forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we lower our heads before you and we confess that we have too often forgotten that we are yours. Sometimes we carry on our lives as if you are not there and fall short of being a good witness to you. For these things we ask your forgiveness and we also ask for your strength. Give us clear minds and open hearts, so that we may witness to you in our world. Remind us to be who you want us to be, regardless of what we are doing or who we are with. Hold us to you and build our relationship with you and with those you have given us on earth. Amen. Some words from the second book of Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the prophet Nathan, see now, in a tent, Nathan said to the king, do all that you have in mind for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle, 
wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel? Did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, who are commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to your servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from the following the sheep to the prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make you a great name, like the names of the great ones of the earth, and I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. <clears throat> Hear words from the Gospel according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. So let's turn to our service sheets and say those words that Mary spoke, the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked with favour on his lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors to Abraham and his descendants forever.
May these words be in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mary said yes. God asked her to bring Jesus into the world and she said yes. She did what she was asked to do. She did question the practicalities of the situation, saying, how can this be? But once the angel Gabriel had explained what was happening, she accepted her fate with a grateful heart. In fact, she was more than grateful. She was joyful about it. So joyful that she said those words that we now know of as the Magnificat. Beginning, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. Mary said yes. Mary knew she wouldn't just have the role of carrying Jesus through pregnancy. She knew she would be there nurturing him through infancy and offering support throughout his childhood and maybe even making sure that he ate well and looked after himself as an adult. She didn't think of that as a burden. She felt blessed. Mary said yes. God had chosen to come to earth as a human being, just like you and me. How amazing is that? God coming to earth as a normal person, and experiencing the human life. Mary would have known the Jewish scriptures, but she still may well have thought that the angel Gabriel was bonkers for suggesting that it was her who would help to fulfil them. But she still agreed what God wanted her to do. Mary said yes. She couldn't put it off. It had to happen straight away. She couldn't say, hang on God, I'll just mull this over for a few months or even years until I'm ready. And I'm really, really sure that that is really what you want me to do. She allowed it to happen straight away. Mary said yes. Will you? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as you sent an angel to Mary, bearing good news for all people, enlighten and enrich us with the good news of your love for us all, and dwell in our hearts, so that we too may leap to your voice and live our lives in the steady rhythm of mercy on which our faith is founded. Amen. Let's join together and profess our faith with the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we come to our prayers. Let us pray. Gathered as the Church of God in this place, albeit remotely, let us pray together for the coming of the Kingdom. Lord of Heaven, may the Church be quiet enough to hear your voice, humble enough to move your way, and excited enough to spread the good news. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord of heaven, bless all who lead with integrity and respect for others. Bless all in positions of authority, with humility and a sense of right. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord of heaven, make our homes places of loving acceptance and developing faith. Teach us in all our friendships to grow in generosity of spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Give patience and courage to all who have to wait when the waiting is long and painful. Bring healing to all who are wounded whether physically, emotionally or spiritually. Give them assurance of your presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Welcome into eternity all those who have died. Comfort those who mourn. May they know your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord of heaven, we thank you for your faithful promise to us, fulfilled in the coming of Jesus. We welcome him into our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So now let's join all our prayers, our thoughts, our hopes and dreams for the future together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we're going to sing together again. i 
for us the heavenward road, and by the way to Delos abode. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, for we So let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day when we shall come again in his glorious majesty, we may rise to the life immortal. Amen. And so may Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon us all, scatter the darkness from our paths, and make us ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us, with those we love, and with those we ought to love, now and forever. Amen. So as we await our coming Saviour, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord, following Mary's example and saying yes. <laughs>